What's up, good people? It's your boy, Young Noah, checking in with Jam the Hype with my lovely assistant. Sarah Jane from Jam the City. Welcome, guys. And we like to welcome Plum here backstage. Hello. How's it going tonight? It's going really well. Thank you. Yeah. How's tour so far? Great. Fun. It's like a slumber party that never ends. Wow. It's really fun. Yeah. So what's good. your favorite part about being here at Winter Jam? Being here at Winter Jam. There's a couple parts. I grew up in Atlanta. Oh. Wow. Welcome so back. I've got quite the posse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are they all coming tonight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I have, I don't know, 50 or 60 guest passes that are out there somewhere that, yeah, it's ridiculous. Wow. But um, I went to high school. So I went like third grade through 12th grade in Atlanta. And so got a lot of family friends, family friends, not family, but family friends and friends from high school here. And so that's fun. That's yeah. really fun. It's the biggest venue I've ever played in in my life. Uh, wow. So preach it. That's pretty <laughs> excited. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Not exciting. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. So those are the two highlights about it being here and mm. this, you know, different from some of the other arena dates. But just the tour in general has been a blast because uh, a Thousand Foot Crutch are some of our really great friends. And so mm-hmm. you kind of it's like being on tour with your buddies. And we've become really close friends with 10th Avenue North and um, Lecrae as well. Lecrae was a big selling point to be a part of the tour for me. He's just cool. I was a fan. Like, I didn't know him, and I was a fan before the tour. And so now to be friends with him is just, you know, (laughs) it's just a really cool cool thing. Yeah, he's the real deal. Yeah. How did you um, come come up with the name Plum as your... Just came from a a Suzanne Vega song called My Favorite Plum. I loved listening to her um, in high school. Her record, Nine Objects of Desire, has a song on it that the, the name came from. And then I added a B on the end because without it, it just means a fruit. And with the B, it means true. So I liked that it had more mm. depth. Deeper know. meaning. Deeper meaning. <laughs> mm. Cool. Did you grow up always wanting to sing? Or I've always really sang. I just have, I've, I've sang everywhere and anywhere I could, but I had absolutely no aspiration to be a singer. That just mm-hmm. seemed like a fantasy kind of thing. Uh-huh. Like, um, And so I, I talked about being a nurse one day, and I'd hope to be a wife and a mom one day, and um, you know, see where that leads. And so, But I sang all the time. Chorus, choir... Um, church, 4-H. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> wow. I was huge. I was huge in the uh, in the uh, wow. the nursing home, homeless shelter, coffee house, you mm-hmm. know, venue. Wow, I was really big in those. I did actually play lots of roller skating rinks, um, cool. but I just loved it. I love singing, so that was just yeah. something like you love to play basketball. I love to sing, so that was wow. kind of a thing. My so brother. What, what was I, the cool. turning point like to kind of go more? I mean, doing stuff like this. Um, someone came to me and said, "We think." you have a great voice. We'd love to offer you a record deal. And so it was just sort of deer in the headlights, like, uh, okay, let's try this. And so I've kind of had to figure out what my thing would be in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it it took a record or two, but I figured out what it was. And so here I am. So I feel like sometimes when you are, you're, you know, God gives everybody gifts, different gifts. I think if you're just available and willing to do whatever he asks of you, um, what he has in store for you is usually beyond what you can imagine. It's unfortunate, though, when I meet people that they aspire for something that's just not their thing. And Mm -hmm. we've all watched American Idol a (laughs) hundred times when you can just, you see, like, that's not their thing. And so although they're, you know, they're at the merch table saying, I want to do what you do. How do Mm -hmm. I do this? And it's like, well, um, I think I, I would rather someone see me as doing something that I'm being faithful to something Mm -hmm. versus what it is exactly specifically I'm doing as, as in music. Like I'm happy and I'm joyful and I'm content. Um, and I feel like I'm flourishing because Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm where God wants me to be. Yeah. And I think wherever that is, is joyful and content and happy and and an amazing place. And so whatever it is, he's got planned for your life just to lean into that, like give into that, whatever it is and don't get too caught up in it being something famous, you know? Right. I love when I hear people say things like that because I'm an artist as well. I do Christian hip hop. And awesome. a lot of times I see people who will see the things I've done and they'll want to jump where I'm at. But then I, the place I'm at, there are people like Lecrae who are like soaring over anything right, I've ever touched right. on. And um, I think contentment is just like a great part of just trying to be an artist or a musician. You have to know that I'm where God wants me to be and I'm comfortable here. I'm happy. Here. I think that's the yeah. best place to be as a human. I mean, it just yeah. artist or not, I just think it's finding what your thing is mm-hmm. and giving yourself to that. And I just, I mean, that's a beautiful thing when you find somebody who, 
who paints or they garden or they're a chef or wh whatever it is, mm -hmm. it has very little to do with how much money you make or how mm -hmm. famous it makes you. And I think when people get caught up in like their agenda behind it being that mm -hmm. they want to be famous and they want to be wealthy, I think that's when they lose the joy. I have no interest in being famous wow. or wealthy I, at all. Um, you can ask my manager. I usually <laughs> like the one that's like, oh, just give them, give, you know, give it away. It's fine. You know? And he's like, uh, no. Well. But um, I just, that's not where my heart is. I mm -hmm. honestly feel like that has something to do with why God continues to honor this. And just because that's, he wants your heart to be in the right place. So just, yeah. I really challenge people, whatever they're at, to just find that thing. Find your thing. Well. Yeah. Do it. Awesome. Yeah. So you got signed to your first record label before your 21st birthday. I did. How I has, did. yeah. How has the dynamics of like writing and just like your whole career have changed over time? Well, you just, I think it should, no matter how ready for it you are, I think you should always be growing. Mm -hmm. So I've definitely grown from that point, but I was a little ill prepared. And I think in a way um, that was endearing um, on various levels to different people. And I think there was, a, there was goodness in that, that I was, I didn't have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, and so the naivety in some of that made me make some really great decisions because I didn't know any better. And it made me make some terrible ones mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I could learn from. And so I think I've continued to grow, but I've definitely found my footing somewhere around in, in between candy coated water drops and chaotic resolve. I kind of found my footing and was like, this is, this is the brand of plum. This is what plum is about. Yeah. And then being able to learn to continue to do that well and continue to strive to do better, not just well. So hopefully that's where I'm at and I'm just getting started. Awesome. Very cool. Wow. Well, I know that you're very happy and content where you are but what yeah. are like the end result of where you're headed like where do you see God really taking you like well I'm in the middle of writing a book um what? and so I'm, I'm anticipating opportunities to speak and talk about mm. that as well as still being a part of songwriting and artistry um and so I man I literally all the greatest things in my life have been unplanned and completely not orchestrated by me and so and when I'm referring to the greatest things I mean my being signed as a label, the way that I met my husband, finding out I was pregnant with each of my children, none of that was anything I was planning. Everything else in my life, mm -hmm. I've tried mm -hmm. to plan. And it's been the greatest things in my life that I actually didn't plan and didn't have wow. anything to do with. Wow. And so I've kind of learned a lesson there to just let it happen. So I don't have these monster dreams mm -hmm. of I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Um, but I do have a little bit of a bucket list of just some things I want to do. And some of them are just frivolous and silly, and some uh -huh. of them are, are big. But being an author is one of them, and, wow. and speaking, and being something more than just, oh, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was an artist. And then you fall off the face of the earth, and you're trying to find, yeah. like, I want to continue right. to reinvent and, and go deeper. And so I want to move just from not just being an artist and a writer to artist, writer, author, artist, writer, author, author speaker, mother, mm -hmm. actress. I would love to be in a film someday. Oh, um, nice. Cool. I don't know. I could be the janitor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, but just to say I did that. Yeah. yeah. I would love to act. If it was a Tim Burton movie, that would just be like the the pinnacle of, of Are who. Are you a fan? A huge, yeah. huge fan of Tim Burton. Um, and there is a Beetlejuice part two coming yeah. out. And so oh, I have like wow. these. Wow. Just these undercurrent, like, subliminal messages that I want to somehow make their way to his ears that I would <laughs> be a great character in one of his films. Yeah. Cool. I mean, don't you think I would? I'll put a word don't in you? for you. Right? <laughs> Just saying. When can we expect your book? Uh, this fall. Later Yay. this fall. Oh. Soon. You got so a title? Get it. I yeah. don't. I don't not have. Yet. I do not have an official title. So some topic. Just content. You can there drop is, on us. Uh, yeah. There is some content. Um, I will just say this, that. My uh, best friend was, was writing to me an email the other day that I shared with my manager, and I'm co-authoring it with one of my favorite authors. Her name is Susanna foth mm -hmm. She wrote, um, All I Need is Jesus and a Good Pair of Jeans. Mm -hmm. um, and I blame Eve. And um, my bangs look good in other lies I tell myself. Like, she's a really witty, relevant, heartfelt author who's... Her, her predominant demographic is women, but not limited to just that. And she writes books that I feel like I would say that. I would have said that. So when it came time to, to write a book, I knew to do it all by myself, it would take years and years. So to have somebody who's more seasoned come alongside me and work with me would make it actually yeah. come out before I'm 100. Yeah. So, 
So we're writing it, and it's just a lot of, um, I, I've written on Facebook before that I went to the School of Hard Knocks as opposed to a university. I never went to college, and so I don't have a lot of this, like, intellectualized wisdom, and there's a very, there very distinct difference, I think, in being um, intelligent and wise, and so I feel like I've had a lot of opportunities for wisdom to take shape in my life versus intellect, mm -hmm. and it's had a lot of embarrassing moments. There's been a lot of really unique moments that are very contrary to the norm and um, even just touching on what I mentioned earlier of how I got signed or how I met my husband or yeah. things like that that just they're not the the traditional stereotypical story and so having opportunity after opportunity to play shows and meet people at the merch table and them have a comment about a song that I've written that has impacted their life and then they want to know more about that subject I feel like I have like 10 seconds with them yeah. And so it's a matter of writing a book that can actually touch on some of the resounding themes that people keep asking me about mm -hmm. my marriage that fell apart and actually was reconciled and put back together. And like, how did you get signed? That's like, you weren't trying to get signed, but what happened? And how did you meet this? And how did you do that? So some of the things that fans have found interesting, being able to kind of elaborate on those a little bit more. So it's kind of like a memoir, I guess, yeah. in a way. Um, but it's not, I just don't want it to be a, a, a book that, implies any narcissism like it's just a matter of uh, let me share some stuff that I've learned in this life and well, I don't yeah. have a college degree and I don't have a you know a master's in whatever yeah. to, to tell you what to do clinically and you know theologically like yeah. here's just yeah. here's just my heart and here's some stuff that's happened and hopefully it'll, it'll make you laugh and it'll challenge wow. you and inspire you and so really it's mm -hmm. just one of those things that we'll see so it's still a work in progress and the title is not known yet yeah. but we'll we'll have it out and hopefully it'll just be on the shelf of <laughs> Every human yes. in the whole world. Awesome. Oh, that sounds beautiful. Awesome. <laughs> I want to read it. I mean, I'm no, no, my expectations are really low, except that every single human will own one. <laughs> right. But they're low. Right. Right. Just a few billion. No aliens. <laughs> a few well, billion you know, people. I believe there's aliens out there, so. Hey, I believe oh, the aliens, okay. too. People always pick at me for that. But. I do. I mean, seriously. Have you seen some of the humans? <laughs> like there's some crazy looking what? humans out there. Like why couldn't there be aliens too? Like yeah. I feel like the creativity could even be exponentialized like far beyond there. I know that's huh? just addressing some craziness there. I but approve huh? this message. You never I, know. I, you never I know. know. Area 51, awesome. is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, for, uh, thank you. You're welcome. For taking your time out no to problem. come hang out with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Really Can you tell it. anybody where to get your music? At a store. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's no, a good one. Anywhere music sold. I mean, iTunes has been incredible to me and Amazon, but I mean, anywhere music is sold, you can find it. And if you can't, you should give somebody a hard time at the counter about Make it. Make a scene. Oh, Make yeah. a scene. Yes. Well, okay, we could do that. But iTunes yeah. has been awesome. So cool. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. It's an honor. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And good luck tonight at All Winter right, Jam. Thank you guys. Thanks.